All right. There we go. Sorry for the uh, <laughs> the delayed intro there. I got pulled away right when I hit go live. How you guys doing? Uh, hello, Lars. Who else is in the chat there? Skull, Blackman, how are you guys all doing? Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to work on, uh, got a little bit of time at the end here, uh, end of my work day, I should say, uh, to work on some more concepts for God Slayer. Uh, just a little update on, on the project here. So what you're looking at on the screen, and I put a little adjustment there on the right, so it should, yeah, it's showing up good. Okay. So uh, this is uh, pretty much the look we're going to be going with. We're going to be pushing this style and just uh, seeing what fun comes from it. It's very fast. It's efficient. Uh, I feel like I'm able to to uh, tell better stories, to be honest with you, now that I'm sort of sim uh, simplifying anatomy and art, as well as uh, trying to go a lot more stylized. I can get in here and I feel like I can push and pull things a little bit more. Uh, and just uh, to bring this back up again, because I feel like we did this last time too, uh, but I like to show you guys, because not everybody watches all the streams, which is fine too. Uh, this one, I guess we could check out, and there was one more somewhere down here. This one. Uh, we actually did this one earlier in the week. But uh, these ones, they're all very similar to the same kind of style. Now, I'm going to try something a little bit different today. Um, I don't think... We, we might draw some characters. Nothing like this, though, I don't think. Um, maybe something like this, but I have some ideas I want to do uh, test out. And instead of just doing them on my own, uh, I thought I'd stream it. And by ideas and tests, I mean... Um, You'll see. You'll see when we get in there. Um, yeah. Oh, also, uh, so I've already plotted issue one, and it'll be going up on Patreon today. Just the, the plots, and then I'll be talking a little bit more about uh, the actual script and how I break that down and what that kind of looks like. So if you guys are interested, follow me on Patreon. There's links everywhere uh, underneath this video, and you can check that stuff out if you're interested in my process of uh, seeing how this stuff gets made. And uh, I've also decided to make this a zine. And if you don't know what a zine is, it's essentially just like a... I don't really have anything here to show it. I love them. I'm a big fan of them because you can do it pretty much from home. Uh, if you have a printer or you can get a photocopy or anything like that and try it out. Really, uh, you can get anything, any kind of piece of paper, uh, fold it in half with a staple, and you can make a comic that way, right? It doesn't have the high production values of like a traditional comic for sure, but... Uh, there's something a little bit cool about the zine stuff, in my opinion. It's a little bit more loose indie, that kind of stuff, and it all, it all sort of fits all together. So, currently, uh, God Slayer issue one will be a zine, uh, and it's looking like 40 pages. Uh, and for patrons, I'm going to try to figure out a way that I can get a PDF up there for you guys. Um, the whole process and stuff, I'm going to do my best to document. Uh, and if you'd like a paper version, I'm obviously going to be printing these as well, and you guys will hear about all that later. As for the crowdfunding thing, what I think I'm going to do is a few of these zines and then maybe collect all them into a graphic novel or a bigger, thicker book, you know, and then we can put that on uh, crowdfunding and try that out. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm just jazzed to get this in here. Yesterday, I spent a good chunk of the day printing out test runs with my copier or my printer just to see how things would uh, line up with crops and stuff like that. So so we're good to go. Right now, all we got to do is just production, production, production. So I'm just going to take this uh, drawing of Alessander here, and this is the main character. I posted this earlier, to, uh, yesterday actually, I think. Um, just a little piece of promo art. And uh, what we're going to do is, uh, like I said, we're just doing some some uh, concept testing too. Now, if you have my brushes, uh, some people asked about this too. I was messing around with uh, what brushes to use for those that are interested in mimicking styles and things. Normally, this one was, uh, I had a, a brush called New Hotness down, down somewhere. But if you downloaded the, the latest brushes, what I've been using now is it's a, it's a Micron. Right here, uh, five point micron, and I put it to monochrome. I just want to show you guys something. So if you color in gray, right? If I do like slow and light, make a new layer, and if we do that in monochrome, and I'll zoom in here. This is the monochrome. It's like subtly a little little different than than the other one, and it's a little harder to see, but. If you have the brushes, you'll be able to feel the difference there. This one here feels a lot more like a, a scanned in rougher texture. But I've been doing the line art with this now. Uh, instead of the new hotness one, it gives me a little bit of variation. And it allows me to do traditional art as well uh, in the same style. So people that are asking for uh, artwork in that style, 
it's all ready to go. Now, the other thing I'll be doing too, and uh, I'll be messing around with it today, and you don't really see it in this one, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push with like a, uh, uh, what's it called, a contour line around things just to make sure things don't get too lost. And what that brush is, is right here, just brush pen dry. And if that's on monochrome, this is what I was uh, using to do like this rendering, if you guys remember, right, uh, with the previous style. But uh, it still gives me some range. And again, this is on a monochrome layer. But the reason I'm using this one is it gives it a little bit of texture to it. And I still like that. So we're going to use that as a contour line around things. And uh, yeah, then we're going to go. All right, so let's delete that. do some drawing. All right, so first, what we're going to do is, give me one second to just sort of feel this out here. Uh, micron. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, also, I forget who, and if you're in the chat, Prakash, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, somebody recommended I use the right side of the screen there to use for promotional stuff. So I, I try to put that up today too. Uh, it seems like it's going okay so far. It would be real slick as if you could click on those areas and it would take you to like hot links and stuff. But I think it might be something a little more interesting on the screen happening. Uh, that way I can also put promotional things that are happening and um, new artwork that's getting done. Just a little something, something. Okay. So we're going to design some like, uh, like there's a monster. Well, there's a few monsters actually in the first book here. Um, one of the things I definitely wanted to try doing was, so he's got this uh, cross, and at the top here is where the whip comes out, right? And I always draw him, and you can see him in the picture on the on the uh, right there. It's like a fist, just like you would normally hold, or I, or I imagine you would hold like a sword, or a, uh, what's it called? A whip in general. What I thought would be cool, and this kind of comes from like Star Wars with their lightsabers and stuff, right? Is, I start to design this thing. If you look on the right, it's a little simple. But you could have... Really neat, I think neat anyway, uh, styles, you know, the way that you hold it, like a, like a powerful style might actually hold it like a sword, a little bit more like this guy, what I had in mind was, you know, you know, you get like a hand up here and a hand down here, and now you kind of get like this weird paw style, right, and maybe you get like another hand up here, but you could get like a real fancy style, and I was also thinking maybe... He could like switch it up in the story, you know, when there's a lot of guys around him or whatever, like an AOE kind of attack, he can kind of get into a more open stance to just sort of let that thing dance around as it's whipping around. And for those that don't know, this was like a few years ago when we first talked about this book. I like the idea of him, like, let's say here's his hand, right? And he's got the whip and he's just sort of like shaking it like real quick like this and it's zipping around. It's like got a mind of its own kind of thing, and it's like doing a whole bunch of actions, as opposed to like a real whip where you're moving it around, and you know it kind of does this kind of feel, and then tsh, make that snap action. I just thought it'd be more dynamic if it was like an art to it, like a, I don't know, just a different kind of style to it. So we could have his hands like this. Welcome, Lyle. Two a.m. <laughs> That's too early, man. That is too early. Uh, let me just check something here. Um, All right, we'll close that up there. All right. Like, do you see how awkward this looks right now, where he's kind of, like, all bent like that? What I dig about that, though, is it kind of gives it a... I'm just throwing this in here. This is more of just, like, a note for myself. Um, let's move it over. It's just, like, a weird... body pose, you know? And what I think is pretty neat about that is it's not traditional. It's It's different. 
That's all, all I'm kind of looking for. Do like a triple hair. I find when you do stuff like this, it's really what separates it from being normal, I guess. You know, like even if somebody's got a sword. Good thing is like if you look at, uh, if you guys have read Berserk, or even Final Fantasy VII, Cloud, you know, gigantic swords. They shouldn't be used the way they're used, but it's got style to it. Also, I've been checking out a lot of manga and uh, some anime too. Like uh, a good example is like, I sort of did it with uh, Alessandra on the right there, but if you check out like a lot of manga artists, they do this thing, right, where it's like, okay, let's say we have the eye, and then the head comes down, and then the nose kind of shoots out like this. And they'll just do like this sort of, this is like a profile shot, right? Let me just clean it up so you can see it. Dig the hell out of it, man. We're going all, we're going all the way with this stuff here. We're going full <laughs> manga, anime kind of stuff. Feels good, to be honest with you. Let's get my chair here. Do you guys know what it's called? Like different, oh, maybe stance. Maybe that's what it'd be called. Maybe something like that. Hardcore, what's that? <laughs> Huge swords are cool. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. Uh, let's go ahead and grab. Where's our micron? I think after this, we'll try to come up with a design for the the whip. And thank you too, everybody, for your... Uh, your support wherever you're following me uh, I would argue the amount of positivity I've gotten with deciding to go with this style at least for this comic anyway um, has been great there's there's been obviously you, you'll get it no matter where you go right there's been some some people that aren't too fond of it and that, and that that's fine. You're going to get that. Because it's so different, I would argue, from what I normally do. Um, but yeah, it's been, uh, I do appreciate all the support. Another thing, too, I'm trying to, trying to consider is, it's a little hard for me to wrap my head around, is... Just doing contours of anatomy and then going in over top of it. Because I have like this, and this comes from just the way I normally would draw. Is like, you know, I want to draw the, okay, so bicep comes in here. You know, and then this triceps kind of coming down here. And we got anatomy coming in and probably got some shoulder muscles coming up there. And it looks fine. But I really want to pull this back and just worry about like this kind of thing here. Where it's, it's just overlapping shapes just for like quick passes of the, the human eye, right, to be able to check up on it and to just know what it's looking at instinctively as opposed to getting caught up in what they think it should look like if that makes sense it's i'm telling you it's uh it might look you know like i'm just putting squiggly lines down and at first glance i think it has this uh feeling of amateurish kind of say i guess you would say and i don't i i get where that could come from But it's really hard to like try to not do what your brain's telling you to do from all the training you've done. <laughs> you know, like all the study and things I've done where it's a, a peck goes this way. And then you're like, I'm just going to throw in like a squiggly line to insinuate where the peck is. 
and then you see that line and you're like, yeah, but if all I had to do was just adjust that one line, it would look like a proper peck. And then you do that enough times and it starts looking more like maybe correct is the right way of saying it. And I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, not concepts. What are we going to call this? This is a, we'll just call it. Yeah, we'll call it comic reference. I guess just for something to look at as I was doing the plots last night or wrapping up the plots, I should say uh, some things were popping up. Where I'm like, okay, wouldn't this be cool? I didn't say this in the beginning. If you have no idea what the hell God Slayer is, it's really uh, uh, um, a combination of two things. It's uh, I don't want to say a love letter because that makes it sound a little too whatever, but just having a little fun with Castlevania mixed with uh, Super Sentai. So like Power Rangers or transformative heroes. Uh, and I would say even the dash of Berserk, I'm trying to get in there too. Uh, I don't want to go so serious that it's super dark, but there's definitely some things that happen in here where it's like, like the very first, uh, uh, maybe not the first page because I'm still doing the thumbnails right now, but I like the idea of here's page one, then when you flip it, we get that double page spread of uh, the story starts with uh, dead bodies falling from the skies. So it's going to have some serious tone to it, but I don't want it to go Berserk where it's just you know, gloom and doom everywhere. I want it to be kind of fun as well. So there's like this mix. But uh, the Power Ranger part, where he transforms is so Alessander here, this is how he normally has his look. We've got a backstory about why he can do the things he does. Uh, but he also is going to transform into like a, again, a, a Giver looking Power Ranger sort of thing. And that's got a whole other cool thing attached to that. Still got to design the way that looks, but... Um, if you're on Patreon, anyway, and I, I don't like putting everything behind Patreon, but, you know, Patreon is definitely a place where, uh, as a creator, you're trying to push eyes and stuff to the things you do, right? So, over there, I'll be sharing things first, uh, especially what he's going to look like when he's transformed, before, like, the comic comes out. So, if you guys are interested in that. And I'm hoping that it'll look cool enough that, uh... People might prefer the look, right? Like, can you imagine Power Rangers? Where everybody preferred the way they look as teenagers as opposed to in their setup? Man. Hey, Pierce, see how it's going? Okay. So we got this. Uh, what else are we doing here? What uh, was we drawing over there? Let's just try to get his face in here, I guess. Something like that. Maybe something like this. I don't know. Maybe like a big fat neck. I've been reading, uh, rereading my Dragon Ball Z manga as well. And one of the things I'm noticing, kind of, I don't know, part of me, you guys let me know. I think a lot of people get into art from Jap Japanese artwork. Like there's something cool about whether it was you played a video game or if it was, you know, just whatever. And then those of us that for a moment or a brief period of time, or whatever, start looking at American art tend to start pushing towards American art, like superhero art, I would say, right? Um, and then we start f either forgetting all the Japanese stuff that we were looking at, or, and or, you just think it doesn't look as good anymore. Or if you're trying to get a job at, let's say, Marvel, DC, and I only use them because that's who we always talk about, that, you know, you can't draw... Kira Toriyama style, you know what I mean, you can, you, you can kind of get like maybe some of the anatomy in there like that, but the faces and things you just can't do, and I think there's definitely some stuff being put out there by Marvel DC that's, that is these things, but, and maybe I'm just speaking for myself here, probably am, 
But part of just doing this right now is a scary only because like, I do feel like it could be uh, a step backwards. Like some people could look at it. No, I, I, people do look at it, right? And go, you know, like, like right here, here's a good example. Look at this neck, right? It should be over here, right? Because this is where we got the collarbones, right in here. Like his neck should be like leaning way back. But it feels cool on this side. At least it does to me. So that's why we're sticking with it. Um, but there's just something... Like I'm stuttering with this one because I'm trying to articulate while I'm figuring this out. The scary part is alienating, I guess, an audience that could have been there for me. Or maybe still is. I hope everybody's still there. But again, the support I seem to be getting is like... I, I've had a few people say they they don't dig it. And most people, I would argue, don't even care, right? Everybody's got their own thing they're doing. We're just trying to make stuff that people are interested in looking at. That's that's it. But the new cats that I'm catching on here on like Instagram and stuff like that, and uh, I'll go check out what they like and stuff sometimes because I'm seeing new people, uh, which is great. And they all like anime and manga and stuff. So I, I definitely feel like it's this is going into a different genre of a fan, I suppose. So... It's kind of interesting to see where, where this could take us. But um, what I was trying to get to in a long-winded way, getting there was sort of like, it's it's nice to be able to just, I guess the freedom to just sort of go ahead and just go, you know what? Just have fun with this for a little bit. And one project doesn't have to define everything you do, right? So if you want to draw, what I'm getting at is if you like manga, make a manga book. See how it goes. Right? Have fun with it. And then go back to your American style comics. Or, or maybe you'll find there's a, a fan base there for you. And it does well. And you could just stay and play in that world. That's sort of what I'm hoping here. I don't want to draw the whole character here. The whole point is this, right? So what I'm doing, and I, I don't think I clearly said this, is this is just a reference for ideas I had uh, and put into the plots for issue one. I just want to have a little thing here that I can always go look back and go, okay, that's what the hell I was talking about. And I think we're going to do like a Thor thing too, because that's that's pretty cool. Throw the, the whip, whoosh, and it comes back. Maybe also put like some, I don't think we'll put it here, but maybe like some holy daggers or something that come out of here. So you can throw it and stab dudes. Because I like the idea of like something coming out here that's like a, a blade so he can do like, like a knife kind of thing too. Uh, sorry, uh, it's taking me forever to reply to you guys here. Oh, okay. How many people are actually in the stream? My, uh, mine says zero, <laughs> but there's clearly people, um, chatting. One second here. Let me, I think YouTube on my end is just being a little silly. Uh, click here, click here, click here, click here. Oh, um, and again on Patreon, I am posting the plots today. Uh, so you guys can see in their, their note cards, too. Where did I uh, actually put them? They're gone. They've disappeared forever. Here they are. Okay, this isn't all of it. Because <laughs> this is insane. But uh, this is how I like to plot first passes of uh, books. Um, but the one for issue one here, and like I say, it's 40 pages so far. It might be a little bit more, but we'll see. Uh this will be up today. And this is more for people that are interested in just seeing how I do it. And, and I like doing this because I can sit outside or I can do whatever. And just They're cheap, right? It's just, um, what's it called? Sharpie or a pen or a pencil on cheap note cards or index cards. And uh, from here, I take this and put it, make a digital version and then flesh it out just a little bit. One thing I will say, um, you know, you don't got to be a Patreon for everything. But uh, and I do appreciate the support. But... Um, I'm not going to script this, just like I didn't do it with uh, Jessup King. I feel like it, it makes it dry when you do that, for me. And there's a whole bunch of other scary things that happen when you don't do that. <laughs> like, uh, uh, what's it called? When you don't script, you're sort of uh, stuck with, well, okay, well, when it gets time to actually put dialogue in the comic, I hope you can figure it out. But I, I feel, for me anyway, Jessup King turned out pretty well. Uh, so, I think we'll do okay. Sorry. I, uh, okay, yeah, we got a whole bunch of people in here. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, guys. I, I'm seeing zero on my screen here. 
Anyway, thank you, everybody that's here. Okay, uh, let me just catch up with you guys here. Uh, Darren, Darren Yeats is saying, hey, John, out of curiosity, what do you think of someone like Phil Barassa? Uh, simpler self animation. Now, if I remember, he's the guy on Darkest Dungeon. I watched a, if that's him, there was a, a keynote he made at some, I believe it was a video game conference. I have it in my Evernote. If you guys want it, let me know. I can jam it in the chat. Um, he's where I got the idea. I think it was of the Creative Tree. And I made a video on that. Basically talking about um, grounding your references and the importance of making a foundation of what your game is. In this case, it could be a comic. I always think about this. Uh, and what's cool, and for comics, for me, comics are a little bit more freeing than video games because you can do anything. In video games, more often than not, I feel like they lean more heavier towards film. So an example would be, let's just say right now, and you guys don't really know anything about this world, right? But let's assume it's Castlevania mixed with Power Rangers, whatever that means to you, okay? Um, with a little berserk, okay? So some demons and some gross looking things, right? All that's together. If all of a sudden a unicorn dragon showed up that he had to fight, I don't think people would go, you know what? That doesn't belong. But in film and a video game, depending on what the precedence is, if you haven't shown something like that before, it might not be believable. But uh, he talks about that, and it was great. He was talking about the inspirations and the direction for the art style, right? Like Mignola, 100% is in it. You can see it. Anyway, to answer your question, I, I love his stuff. I'm a big fan. I know he's posted some things before how Darkest Dungeon, before Darkest Dungeon came out. Like, I don't think, at least the stuff I saw, he didn't draw like how he does in that game. That wasn't the way he drew all the time. I have to imagine he just sort of stuck with it because of the popularity it gained. And who's not a fan of Mignola, right? If you get lucky enough to like get enough people to like an art style you do, it's probably in your best interest, especially if you like doing it too, to just keep going. That's one of the reasons why I've always thought of like, okay, should I do more chibis? Like a comic book of chibi characters? Because the chibi stuff for me sells. And I have to imagine that's more just because people understand cartoons and chibis and it's a cute version of a character you like you know what i mean uh this too this is what i'm talking about with this uh i'm gonna add a little bit of shading because i like doing it uh but this is more in line with how the comic's gonna look it's got a little bit of roughness to it i'm not, I'm not gonna do this with all the concepts i don't think i want to keep it quick because the idea is like it's sort of like you guys have ever looked at like a capcom art book or something you flip through it and you're like here's the character poses of uh what we thought ryu would do with a fireball or some special moves that characters would do Got to be kind of quick. Uh, I'm just sort of warming up with this one, have a little bit of fun. Uh, but this would pretty much be how the comic's going to look with some gray. Plus the stage we're going to do here real quick where I add like just chunky blobby shapes, uh, some maybe some BS lines, a little bit, and uh, this like shading stuff. It's pretty fun. Um, uh, do you watch Sublo or Tangy Mustard? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure what those are, so I'm going to say no. Have you worked on printed comics? Yes, I have. I've worked on quite a few. Uh, Sangu, hey John, hey, I've been great, thank you. Where could you read Jessup King? Okay, so that means... Alright, maybe you can't see it on your screen, but uh, if you see the slideshow, I'm trying to show it on there. Like, I think it's on there... Uh, no, that's Patreon. It would have been just up. Uh, there's links in the video description below too, but you could go to jessupking.com or you could search for Jessup King on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tapastic... And there's another one. What's the other one that's not Tapastic? But you can search it all there. The whole book's already been up there. It is a couple years old, but the whole book's for free. You can go check that out online. Uh, hardcore Silver Surfer Black has been really cool, unique style. Okay, I always forget his name. I'm a huge fan of his stuff. Um, what the hell was the name of that last comic he did that I got? Luther Strode? I thought it was like reading a, an anime, man. It was amazing. Allison, rule of cool. <laughs> Always go with cool, right? Cool over what makes sense. A black man, it's not a step back. You can see you understand structure, uh, but you're pushing it like Magnola O.M. I always say his name wrong. O.M. O.M.I.G. O.M.I.G. Uh, well, thank you. I do, I do appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Surf the smacking. I just realized I was smacking there. Uh, Jeffrey. 
when can we oh when can you read this comic uh this com- I, I don't want to put a date out there i'm trying my best to just go god god slayer we're doing i, I have to do I've, I've put too much eyes on it so far <laughs> talking to people hey come on over here check this book out buy this book it's gonna come out it's gonna be cool these things right in the future uh, after this one and i i hope you guys can hold me to it uh, i'm a big fan of getting a little bit of muscle behind uh, behind me from my my fans and friends um where the hell am i going looking for this one of um, unless you're a patron if you're a patron it this is this is different but if uh you're a patron i will sort of show rough sketches or yo i can't wait to start this comic next kind of thing publicly i'm not going to do that because what i've done too much in the past is uh go oh man you guys are going to love that check out this cool drawing i did and i have an idea of the, sp- the plot all that cool stuff um, but then it never ends up being made and that's not a good feeling for you guys it's not a good feeling for me it starts i know what it inherently inherently will do it just makes people not trust uh what i'm doing or if i make a book or or something coming up plus if we do the crowdfunding thing after i get a couple zines out of this stuff um you know if i'm not actually moving on that people could get pissed and those those are the same people you want to ask to come in and help fund your book right or maybe even be interested in buying it so gotta be careful you gotta play you gotta play a smart game out there so if something's being made i'll talk about it and i'll show it this here this will be like i said uh, you may have came in a little bit later uh, this is going to be a zine and i love the idea of doing zines um, just getting a lot more into Corey lewis go check him out too please 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 you guys will probably see a lot of inspiration from what i'm doing from him um him and Kirby, I keep talking about, but uh, really, uh, Lewis has really shown me, I just love his passion for, and, and, I, and I apologize for the language we're going to use here, and, and I might be just bullshitting what he's thinking and stuff, but his, I don't give a fuck about what people think, comics, I just think they're so cool, and I'm trying to influence some decisions I'm doing, and just go, you know what? If he says it's okay, it's okay to do. <laughs> sort of putting him on a little bit of a pedestal here. No, I don't like the shadow under the nose. And what he's showing me, anyway, is that it's okay to do this kind of stuff. And kind of looks like Naruto a little bit. Uh, it's okay to do this kind of stuff. And even if, like, what's the worst that's going to happen? And I and, and I get stuck in my own head a lot about what comics or projects I should work on. Because I, I wonder if that's appropriate or something. Or if, you know will people actually be interested in this you know i think a lot of us get stuck in that what we end up doing is making what we think people want as opposed to either asking what they want and or making something that you think that you don't care what people think and then seeing if they actually like it and honestly that's what i'm doing with this one i don't really i'm not putting anybody else uh, ahead of me besides let's just have some fun with this one and we'll see where we go right you can always revert back to uh older styles and stuff so so yeah it'll look something like this uh, i don't know about the it kind of looks like eyeliner a little bit on him i just kind of put that on there just to you know, like he might look a little bit better with just traditional eyes but we're just sort of figuring it out so you see again i know his arm is all wacky that's the point whether or not it'll look like this in the book i don't know but for me, it's just the idea of keeping, this is like a sketchbook thing. Something you might go like trap an idea down, look at it when it's time, and then you might go into it, right? So you see this BS anatomy stuff I'm putting on him here? It just looks cool to me. That's the only reason I'm putting it in there. Uh, and I think what, we're, what I'll do too is I'm going to, I like the contour line, but if it's not, Highlighting forms over forms, uh, it's probably not serving its purpose. So I think that looks a bit better. Again, just to make it hopefully helpful for the eye. I'm just going to do a very quick, uh, what's it called here? A gray pass, and then we'll get into some, some more ideas. Right, we'll go 
this. Flip it. Okay, so I'm just because I got my note there, hand gesture styles for different stances. Okay, um, and and I appreciate, again, if you guys got comments or questions, please jam them in here. I'll do my best to, to catch up there. I don't mean to ramble like this all the time. Uh, oh, uh, I don't think I, it, did I, I did talk about this will be a, um, a zine. I'm only going to do a limited print, I think, for this first run. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to try to do something special with it. Maybe include a print and something else. So far, it'll be Etsy. I'll probably post it maybe somewhere else. Uh, I think there's like store envy in, in sites like that. I haven't put anything on there because you need a monthly fee from what I've checked. I, ideally, I would like to get like a, uh, a, a web store up. But monthly sales are important, right? So if my monthly sales are just meeting the, the upkeep cost of that, then I don't want to go there. You know what I mean? So I'm still ironing things out. So, so far to be Etsy, I will do a limited run for the first set of zines. And I'll show you guys, you know, you don't have to be on Patreon to see what it's looking like as we go. Uh, just imagine uh, regular printer paper. I'm going to get some nicer paper than that, though. Something that's got like, you know, feels nice. Oh, nice. I want you to, so when you look at the paper, you can't see through it. This is a huge thing. And then the cover, the wraparound cover, uh, it'll be on Harvard, harder card stock or something like that. Something that bends nice, but I'm still not sure if we're going to go full color with that. It might be neat. Or just go like a lot of people will just get like a colored paper and then print on there to get the cost down, right? It's a, it's cheap stuff, but it's still a full 40 page book at least, right? So we'll see where we're going. We'll do the first pass there. Uh, I will do the PDF thing. I think the PDF stuff I might keep behind the Patreon paywall. So if you're on Patreon, that's how you get the PDF. Not totally sure just yet on there. A, a few people have asked, uh, reached out and showed me some sites to do this stuff on too so there's options right now i'm just worried about making it uh with the intent of making it a print zine but i only want to do a certain amount uh only because i don't want to get stuck with inventory right and the thing is if i'm printing it myself the, the cost is low anyway so it's not a it's not a huge massive commitment to uh to be able to hold that up so hopefully i, I answered your question there um Uh, Jeffrey's saying, you could include a slight curved line if people don't get it. I mean, Sean Galloway and many other people have the same approach. We're simplifying. Yes, I, I agree too. Sean Galloway is a, a, an amazing person to check out for this kind of stuff. We're simplifying anatomy, for sure. He does an amazing job. Uh, Lars, Akira Toriyama is totally my jam. Dragon Ball is the sole reason for doing art. And a lot of people say that, man. As a young kid who didn't like... And the thing is, I think Toriyama... When I was growing up, I would say in the 90s, early 2000s, if you drew anime slash manga, especially in, like, people people wouldn't really look at you and go like, oh, that's not true. I, I Only because of this one comment. There's this artist I knew, and he looked at my stuff, and my stuff didn't look like this at all. But he was like, your stuff just looks like, like you're a Jim Lee clone. And that's a huge name, and I don't think that really sticks around anymore. Late 90s, maybe even in the 80s, I don't know. But early 2000s, the word clone was everywhere. So if you drew, like, Toriyama even though he's the one that got you into comics, you know, or just liking art, they would just call you a, a Dragon Ball clone or whatever, right? And, like, that would eat you up, and people would just start not looking at your stuff. They would just say, like, you just look like Dragon Ball. And I think nowadays, I mean, there's still, like, a little stigma to that, for sure. I think you should be able to bring something else to it. Don't just copy the style verbatim. Um, but I think nowadays, homages and kind of having a flair to things, there's so many artists out there now, where I think it's oversaturated. So there's a lot of ways to hide your influences in there, but definitely put them in there. So I'm, I'm hearing you, man. Uh, Lars is still talking about DBZ there. All of a sudden had me reading for hours every day. When I wasn't reading, I would sketch Goku all day. I owe Dragon Ball a lot. I don't think I would have a teacher. To, I wouldn't be a teacher today if I didn't start reading DBZ. I even wrote my thesis at teacher college about how manga comics can help younger students uh, become better readers. What he's trying to say is there's definitely an audience for manga. In my, okay, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate that, and I agree. I don't even know if you guys can see. Uh, that was the first one I actually bought, and it was scary. Uh, right there, all there. Uh, Amazon, I don't know if they still have it. It was like this box set with like a handle. All Dragon Ball Z, all the manga from, what do we got, 1 to 26? Yeah, 26. I remember I was flying through each one of those, like one a day, one every two days. And what I liked about it, actually, was my introduction to dbz was the show when i read those I, like the show's fun and you know watching the movies is fun but those blow it out of the water man the story in them and stuff it's great it's great webtoon thank you that's the other one 
Hey, Michael, how's it going? Uh, quick was my middle name, then legally changed to agonizingly slow because I wanted to be, I wanted to be honest. Welcome, man. Trad Moore, thank you. That's the guy's name. Uh, practice John worked on a D&D type game, uh, but you can't tell when it's finished because only his roughs were used, if I remember correctly. It's a pretty fun game. I think it's, yes, Worlds in Peril is, uh, yes, that's one you're talking about. Actually, here, let me bring that up because we're working right now on Galaxies in Peril. We are getting back to this. I promise you guys that. Um, and if you like my more traditional style, this, here, let me just bring this up. You guys will see, right? These are the ones we were already hammering out, uh, these kinds of things. So we'll go back to this. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, it got funded, which is awesome. Uh, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of commissions and stuff. So don't worry. We got we got plenty of work. Um, where are we? The last thing we have to do here are these uh, chapter splashes. We got them all lined up. But uh, yeah, you know, we'll still definitely be doing this kind of stuff with the coloring, the traditional stuff. But my stuff, it's going right here for now. It's going here. We're going we're gonna to play with this stuff and see how long this goes. Hey, Lawrence, welcome. Yeah, everything's uh, everything's great. And the baby, he, uh, Alexander's doing great. Thank you for asking, my friend. Uh, Sengoku is saying, really like this style. Less detail, simple, yet clean. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, quick question from Lawrence. Uh, have you ever made a comic strip like Sunday Comics in the newspaper? I made one. I made a few when I was growing up, but... Those, I always like reading them, but they weren't the thing that got me into uh, doing comics at all. I don't know if I have it here. Let me quickly check. Um, all ages? No. It was just like this stupid, campy thing. It was, um... It's like a wizard and a warrior, and one was poisoned, and he's begging for like a, a potion, an antidote or something, and the guy's reaching in his bag and he can't find it in time, and the guy dies. Three panels, that kind of thing. But I don't. I'm not. Uh, I tried. Okay, when I read that book, uh, How to Make Web Comics, I think it was. That was like one of the first things I started thinking of. Was okay. Well, how can I make these kinds of comics? And it was. I, it was being forced, man. It didn't come natural. And at the end of the day, it's like if I had to pick a comic to read, uh, for me, yeah, it's not here. I can't find it. Uh, comic strips, I don't know. I, arguably, I guess that's where I would look at them like manga or anime where people might look at it like that and go, that's not that's not for me. I know it's a, probably a horrible way of doing stuff, but uh, that's just the truth for me anyway. I know a lot of people like them, though. I would argue more people like those than they do like traditional comic books. And I'm not saying that, like, for, you know, the shit on people. If if you're doing that and you like it, let's be honest. If you're making art that you like, that's all that matters. Again, just put, like, a quick gray pass on there. Cool. All right, we got a stance. And one of the things I'm still trying to debate, I don't know if I'm just going to, like, I, I know I, I don't think I can. Just do something like that with the, the whip, you know, or just like whoosh, doing this kind of stuff. It just looks too, f too weak. But if we use, like, a pressure-sensitive brush, I don't know. I also don't even know if I like that, if whipping around is just too much. Or if we go like a rope, not sure. So what I think we'll do is we're just going to go. I'll know what this means. Trying to insinuate like motion with this thing. Remember what I was saying with the, the subtle gestures that you can make? And it just starts like zipping around. Something like that, just for now. Uh, okay, um, mm hmm uh, Prakash is asking, will this be black and white or color? Personally, I think black and white might work better for castlevania inspired. Uh, so far, I'm going... Uh, oh, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and honestly, guys, just to be... I'm going to check costs and stuff. Shipping is always the brutal part because I'm in Canada, and our shipping costs suck. So 
I have to just get something that's similar to this. Like what I can do honestly is just grab a, like 20 pieces of paper and piece of cardstock, fold them. And this is what I'll be doing that. And I'm also going to put in like a, I assume a print and maybe something else just to get the weight up a little bit and just see how much it costs for shipping on that. Uh, in my mind, 10 bucks sounds about right for a 40 uh, again, if you're looking, just grab, I wish I had something, just grab like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and fold it in half. I will be cutting the sides or something like that, but it's pretty much around there. So you, you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about with that. Um, so I'm going to try 10 bucks and see, see what happens. Um, and I don't think it's a lot of money. Some might argue it's maybe a lot for a comic, but we're talking 40 pages, 40 pages. And I actually heard Corey Lewis say this too. And I, and I agree. Uh, a lot of that stuff that guy says, I agree with where he was saying, like, uh, if I'm saying it right, people wouldn't scoff at spending like five bucks to ten bucks for a coffee. And you're talking about ten bucks for forty pages of a little world, a little adventure, a story, a comic book, right? But I think people just value comics cheap, which is a shame, right? Because forty page comic could be what a ten minute animation, maybe, you know. Anyway. Uh, so I'm thinking black and white for everything in this style. I don't even know if I'm going to go back to color. I might one day, but uh, this gray style, like, check this out, man. Like, this was just, like, one of those sketches I was doing. I mean, I'm I'm just turned on right now by this stuff, so no matter what I do, it's going to look good to me. So I'll open up those comic page tests that we did. I'll open this dude. Why not open that dude, that dude, that, uh, not that guy. That's for Patreon. I'll do that. What else we got? King of Clubs with that. Okay. Oh, and uh, one of my favorites. Vegeta. Did I say how much I love this style? Because I get to put in uh, sound effects. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So like this. Like it looks cool to me. It's got like the influences of manga and stuff, right? Like look at the ridiculous anatomy and all that. I'm down. It's cool. So we got that. This guy. Right, like you see the gray. I I still have to find the the grays I want to use. That's the only thing. Um, this was like those test pages we were doing. This one you can watch the whole process. I I uploaded that. I think it was two hours. Like this to me is the pinnacle of this style. I'm sure I'll be chasing this look, a lot. This was a test with doing some other things. This one I'm not too too sure on. There's a little it's it's kind of soft, but uh, it's got some legs. Then there's this stuff right. Got to have the sword. So it'll all be there. It'll all be there. Ashcan, thank you, Michael. That's another thing people call it. Too. Ashcan uh, format is awesome. Just got a wildcat number five. Ashcan, really okay. <laughs> Lifeline for appreciators, right on, dude. Uh, hardcore artist sang a Jew a lot as a child and then got back into it 13 years because of Dragon Ball. Yep, Dragon Ball is legit. I gotta get the original Dragon Ball stuff. I never really got into that one. Uh, Corey would love to hear that. Yeah, I'm running behind. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Jeff. Corey's amazing. I'll talk about him all, all day long. I mean, right here, just so you guys know, the Kirby ones are just moved. I don't know. I always say this to you guys, so I feel like nobody trusts me. They're down there. I had to move around to make room for the cats. But... Uh, there's certain Kirby books I have over here. Over here, I've got my, um, uh, one of them is uh, <clears throat> in the bathroom. Shark Knife, first one, right? Amazing stuff. I bought this many years ago. This one I just recently bought with a bunch of Kirby, uh, some bakery. This is a collection, actually. This is sort of uh, the inspiration for what I'm kind of doing, I'm thinking of anyway. Like, this is uh, a combination of all of his zines, or ash cans, mini comics, whatever you want to call them. And he just put them all into a graphic novel, right? I'm trying this. This is what I'm going to try. I don't know if I'm going to do different stories like he's doing in here. I don't even know if this is really showing up because the uh, screen's so small. But uh, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about that makes me excited because it's like this. Hellboy. Magnola. Um, Sin City. To me, they all feel like books that aren't... They're not Spider-Man. You know, and there's nothing wrong with Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm just over Spider-Man. I'm over Batman. I'm over Captain America. I'm, I'm over these guys. If I got a chance to draw them, maybe if I could have some fun with it. 
but I feel like, uh, I don't know, my tastes are just changing so much now that it's, I'm just not really into them anymore. Personally, I just want to experiment, you know, have some fun. That's why I like manga so much, to be honest with you guys, it's just fresh. I feel like I, I read more unique, over the top, pushed, heavily pushed uh, comics when I read manga. Traditional comics, like superhero books, they just feel so stale lately. It might be cool to draw, like, don't get me wrong, like, I like drawing Captain America, but I'm, I want to draw him like this, over here. I want to draw Captain America like that. Actually, I want to draw Captain America like this, you guys remember? This is one of the things that I was saying, like, with the style that I'm doing, was, uh, and a lot of people liked it too, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I have to wonder if it's because of the coloring too, it feels a little bit more like Marvel versus Capcom. This is the Captain America I want to draw, I want to do this, look at this wacky, look at this. Yeah, we even tried a grayscale one with zip tones and stuff, but uh, where was it? Like, this is what it looks like, right? Like, a lot of people hate looking at this, but fuck, it's good, look at that shoulder. What is that shoulder? <laughs> but anyway, this is... This, I feel like, is maybe a little bit a mix between where I want to, kind of want to go. Again, here, uh, I want to get back into kind of this chunky stuff. Don't go too sloppy. I don't go too sloppy. And I don't think this is too sloppy. Maybe it is. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, just make the cover showcasing two cups of coffee. Then we're done. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, at your post office, ask if they have media mail price. We have that in America, but only if you ask. It's a discount price of shipping books. Really? Interesting. Interesting. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, so we've got this. Um, what are we drawing next? I think I've lost track to what I was drawing. There was one of the style. Actually, you know what might be cool? I just want to do this. Let's do a... Alright, so we'll have him kind of like, I want to do one of those Capcom style things where it's, um, maybe he's, standing cool, oh he doesn't got the cross in that hand, it's over here. All oh, right, we gotta design the cross. I forgot about that. Okay. So I have him looking here. All right. And then well, I don't know. What do we put? A zombie? Is that the bad guy? A zombie? Maybe we'll just do a. We'll just do a creature. It doesn't matter. We're just doing a human. Well, fuck it. it. Doesn't matter. So we'll put lumbering giant. Coming after him. Right. So we got here, we'll get the whip. Let me turn, uh, I'm running out, I know I'm going to run out of space. <laughs> Here, we'll turn this off for now. I just want to kind of do like a process of, this is one of the fun things I enjoy doing with this kind of stuff. I do a lot of this, well, maybe I didn't at work necessarily, but when you kind of go like, figure out what, what would the stance look like, right? So I got the hand kind of doing its thing, but what's the, what's the thing he's going on? Capcom with a little John Armita Jr., hell yeah. Hello, CJ, how you doing? Now, all right, so we, 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 he would go and this is kind of important to figure out because you'd rather figure this stuff out here, right than when you're on doing pages. 
Although, arguably, I mean, I do a lot of thumbnails like this. If Again, if you guys are on Patreon. <laughs> you guys are going to get sick and tired of that if you're not already. Uh, I'll be... The thumbnails that I'll share, they're, they're going to start looking this way. What I dig about this style is, if you see this here, this could be a panel. What I would do is I would just draw over top of this. Um, sometimes I would... In my older stuff, I would go in there and I would do like a second pass of anatomy. Um, but what's, what's what's neat is just working this way, you kind of f try to figure out uh, how to fix solutions without um, bogging it down with everything getting creative. Or not creative, like try to figure out the appropriate anatomy something would have can really slow things down as opposed to getting the energy. So maybe his hand would come up here. I'm just going to copy. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. This is uh, getting silly here. And then, so he's walking towards him here. There we go. Actually, let's get cooler with this, right? Always got to try to think about style and cool. So I think what we need. Hand maybe. What do we do with the arm? Maybe start spinning on the ground. Kicking up some steam. You guys kind of see what I'm going with here? Trying to, trying to get. Can we get the transformation look? Like what he looks like when he's uh, all power rangered up? The answer is no. We're still designing that. And that's going to be, until I forget, <laughs> Patreon exclusive. Exclusive. Uh, I did not read any Dragon Ball Super. Is it good? Have you ever tried print on a man service like CreateSpace? Uh, I used, oh, what is that called? Uh, boom, 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 boom. For my art book. I don't even think it's up there anymore. I don't even know if that site's still up there. I don't even know if my art book's over here. Uh, what the hell was that called? Oh, yeah, it's right here. Look at this puppy. Whew. Here, let me, uh, let's do this right. Because it's so bad. Whew. Look at that. Look at that. Nice and thick. Uh, I don't know if this one says where it was printed, but I don't think so. Uh, this was printed though in. Did I date it? Um, but like, look, this is the old way of John drawing right here. I got a really crappy webcam, by the way, guys. But he's ripping a guy's face off. I know. Uh, let's see. There you go. You guys don't see me draw sexy, sexy women's that often. Oh no, I just lost it. There it is. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of uh, look how old this stuff is. What's the date on here? I'm pretty sure I didn't date this because I didn't want it to get dated. You know, like some people they won't buy an issue one of something because it was ten years old. I was working on the standard here. 
I can't remember the name of this place. Kablam? I think it was Kablam. I don't even know if they're still around. And I don't mind print on demand. Just because it's like... I don't know. I feel like maybe print on demand's older. Sorry, I'm just looking at all this stuff. Anyway, uh, let me get back to here. I, I feel like Kablam... Or not Kablam. Print on demand is like... An older way of doing stuff. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It puts the burden on you guys, right? So, like, if you want to, um... Actually, I should read this again. Neon Genesis. I'm gonna pull that out. Um, like, if you guys wanted to buy a book of mine, right? You gotta do this and that. I would argue the difference, though, here. Zines. Uh, I don't think they do... They're not... I don't think they're meant for print-on-demand. I think zines are... You know, I'm gonna... I'm going to do it. Because it doesn't cost me that much to do a whole bunch of them, staple them, cut them, and then all I have to do is mail it out. So the cost isn't that high. That book, though, because it's a graphic novel size, uh, like the shipping alone was brutal. I think it was almost twenty bucks. And one of the cool things I, I, I will say for sure about print on demand is you don't get stuck with inventory. That's huge. But the zine that I'm doing, these, no, nah, I don't need to worry about that. I need to work on these poses. These are pretty lackluster. Alright, so this thing's gonna go... Actually, let me uh, finish drawing this guy because what I wanted to do is... I don't want to say bondage, but wrap the guy up. You want to go full video games here, right? So this is down. And then we're going to go forward, down, punch. And then you got to, uh, yeah, here we go. All right, now, now we're flying. Boom, 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 kick. Something like this. 
See how uh, clunky this is? This is one of the things I want to improve on. Specifically with this style. everything I want everything to be like... How do we got there? So he's, whoo, snap. A little clear. Something like that. Anyway, okay, let me catch up with what you guys are saying here. Uh, hey, create now, welcome. Uh, Lord, sorry, I didn't finish your question there. You can make the book, upload it, and people are, yep, yep. I think, too, again, uh, for those that don't know zines, check out what zines are. Um, I can explain a little bit more if you guys are a little confused on them. Um, like, there's a couple here. One sec. Uh, let me bring this back up. Yo. Okay, so some of the tools here. Uh, this. It's a, what do they call it? It's a bone something. Bone ruler or something like that. And you just use this to make creases in the paper, right? So that, literally a piece of paper, which I will not get. Uh, one of these boys, right? So was it a bow stitch, whatever? Basically, uh, you just put your paper in there. Nice long elbow. Punch it. You get that. And then I won't take it out, but it's one of these. Well, maybe I will. What the hell? Let's just show you guys. Giant. You know, one of these bad boys. That's it, right? So I have everything I need. All I need now is pieces of paper to do all this too right so that's the benefit of zines anyway just make an order print them out and assemble them at your house staple it cut it done it's very simple and i would argue too i think everybody should try making one if you haven't only because it's uh you can go through an entire process of making a comic book in your house and I think what it does is it takes the maybe the romanticism out a little bit. And the allure and maybe the, uh, oh God, it's too hard to make a book kind of thing. Since you have to make, you can do the entire process. You can even figure out how big your font's supposed to be when you print it to scale. All those things. Maybe we should be in the air. Uh, that little example showed me a couple of things. And I'll do this in my sketchbook. Uh, not my sketchbook, but um, scrap pieces of paper, I guess. Uh, just sort of figuring out some of these things. Like when I when you do the comic, in my mind, when you're plotting something out, it's along these lines, right? Like monster approaches hero, hero gets weapon ready, ties him up, and then like kills him. But it wouldn't be shot like this. But it's fun to have because it just makes your mind go, okay, cool, you know, like. Oh, wow, this wind-up thing. Maybe that could be a thing. He's just there, and it's just spinning on the ground or something, right? Like, it just generates the, the next idea. It doesn't have to be the idea, just the next idea to happen. Um, that's really all, all I'm looking forward to do with that. But having a bunch of those, I think, is, is pretty strong. Because the more, uh, more options you have, uh, the better. And you don't always have to figure this stuff out before you do your comic. Because that's half the fun, man. You're drawing your own books, right? Like, okay, today I'm sitting down to draw this. What happens? <laughs> what does that look like? Uh, okay, let's make a... 
new layer. All right, so we got like the, the rough outline here. How do you spell it? Scenes or zines? Oh, it's like magazine. So Z I N E. Zine. Or you could try Ash Can. Or even a mini comic. Let me see if I can show you guys something. Uh, I would also argue too, and this is just for me, uh, a lot of the zines that, you, like when you Google search, like I am right now, uh, I don't want to show them to like highlight anything, but like a lot of zines, they're, I would say they're gravitated towards people that are just learning comics and or they like the, the genre of comic books, but they, I don't say they're not talented artists or storytellers, but it's, it's a pure form of just telling a, a story or a thing. Um, Corey Lewis, like I keep bringing him up today, uh, he's, I would say an exception to the point, like if you look at his stuff, it could be quick and sloppy, some of it, uh, and then other ones are very tight. So it just depends, yeah, I'm not really finding anything as an example, but you could YouTube this stuff and all that. You guys will see, we'll, we'll, we'll all play along. <laughs> okay. So I kind of like what I was doing with this one, to be honest. This uh, cross here. This has got a name. I still have to finalize the name. I like the idea of... Almost looks like a chalice a little bit. Now, remember, we got little indents for like his fingers and stuff, right? So maybe we can kind of come down. Give him places to... Uh, play How do, like I may I feel like I maybe I nailed it right here just straight with some shit I don't know I'm sure how it'll look will change <laughs> as we draw it Actually, you know what? This is just fine. Let's keep this. Yeah. What we could do is just add some. Got to have something in here, right? What the? Some sort of broken up diamond or something in there. Four reasons, which uh, maybe we'll get into in this story. Trying to make it, f trying to make it feel like it's uh, like a relic, right? Just a little bit, anyway. It's still a weapon, but. Still like the idea of a, a like a blade coming out of here. Shuck. Not that big. Did we do like a, like a katana coming out of there? <laughs> I 
I just want him to be able to have like a melee option, you know, instead of just always being a whip. I'm not totally sold on that yet. Again, it's it's tricky. Try to figure out a balance of this this look too, of. Uh, Worrying about like the overall shape and then going in to add the details as opposed to again going in here and going like okay well here's where this lines up this lines up like it's tough <laughs> it's taking a lot of uh, brain work I'll tell you that I also think I like the idea of um, let me just write this down I don't want to forget these ideas so the whole point of this okay so I don't want to forget this one okay so um, whip. Inside comes out when activated. Same with knife. Cool. Um. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Alright, I got one other thing to design with this stuff, and then if we got enough time. Maybe we'll do a character or something. Doing something. Uh, let me just check here. So he's got this uh, thing here, if you guys notice. And uh, I should say here, this drawing, let me just put up here for those that didn't see this that I posted yesterday. Um, just meant to just kind of get some excitement going, like, okay, I've decided to go with this style. There's some things that will definitely change. For example, right, like the actual whip that we just drew. Anatomy proportions a bit, right? Hair a little bit. Maybe the overall look. Kind of, but it's pretty much this. Uh, but I just wanted to have something with his name, Alexander Kilmont, right? Uh, but I just wanted to sort of, it was more of a promotional piece. So this is the, the art style, and we're going forward on it. So I wanted to, that was the point of it. <clears throat> but some things were kind of like just put in there because people that have been following the project kind of know a little bit about the guy already. Get with the cross, but he has this, uh, it's like a demonic parasite on him, and he doesn't know why. Some more mysteries we can figure out as we uh, tell the story, but it talks to him, so it adds like, it's like a secondary character for dialogue. Excuse me, but I put a little like, um, some tentacle looking things and an eyeball on the shoulder, but it's very plain, right? And it's fine. I think it, it's simple, but what we can do is I'm going to just maybe push it a little bit. Because I don't know how it'll look on his arm. Maybe when he's at a distance, we can simplify to this, right? But you never know. You, you'll probably want some uh, close-up shots at some point in your star story, right? Uh, Lawrence, I'd make the whip serve two purposes, either a whip or sword. That's what I'm thinking, my man. Okay, so let's get... Uh, His chest in here. I'm going to try to keep his arm pretty straight. Just so we can draw on it. Let's 
see I'm doing it already. Ugh. It's going to take some getting used to, friends. Doesn't really matter over here. So I just need a place that we can design on. That's all we're trying to do here. I like the idea of the eye on the shoulder. It lets him uh, get some emotive capabilities. But I also want to have a mouth. A little spoiler. As the story, I don't think it'll... It might happen once in the first issue. Uh, but it will slowly start going over. Like taking over. So eventually this thing will be all over his body. Can get it so it's not all the way out. Maybe we could have. Um, I do kind of like it coming out because it gives like some cool, uh, like some interesting shots. You know what I mean? Like it comes out here, looks like a, a moving nightmare kind of thing. So maybe we'll keep some of this stuff. I don't want it going down all the way of his arm. merge these together. It kind of looks like the arms dancing here. I don't I don't like that. Maybe just because the way the mouth is. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Jeff I got from recorded Lewis and his uh, style when he did the last two issues of Arcanium with uh, Lashan. Le I always say Lassine Thomas, and he also did a rival school run for Udon Entertainment. By the way, he has his own channel. Oh, I yeah, trust me, man. I'm a I'm a patron of his. I do pretty much anything he does. And that was before even just like 
being inspired by his stuff to just do kind of what I'm doing now. I've been following him for a while, man. I've said it before, but there used to be a forum back in the day called Eat Poo. And uh, he was one of the earlier guys on there. And he had a different style back then. I don't know. It wasn't Joe Mad, but Joe Mad had like a such an impact on me that when I saw Corey's stuff, it wasn't, again, it wasn't traditional. Like how you would draw Superman, Batman, these kinds of guys. So it immediately stood out. And there wasn't a whole lot. Like this is during the time when... Uh, Actually, this mouth isn't going to work there because, well, maybe, well, I'll get rid of this bracer thing. But uh, this was when, like, anime was just starting to get over here. Like, when I was growing up, man, if you were into anime or manga, you were, like, a nerd, a geek. You were, like, weird. <laughs> you know, we all loved X-Men cartoon, but, or not X-Men, what was the, uh, I didn't really watch Thundercats because that was a little bit before me, but some of those shows had, like, anime intros, and nobody really batted an eye at that, but... If you were saying you like to watch Dragon Ball or Hell, I I tweeted about this too, Record of Lotos War. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. There's a guy at a card shop and he was uh, the one showing us all this kind of stuff, Robotech. But like it was geek nerd stuff. Like the kind of stuff where if you see people looking at that, you don't associate with them. <laughs> I know it sounds horrible. It's totally different now, obviously. I think, uh, yeah, so we'll have, I don't know if I like that eye on there. I'm going to try drawing that again. Everything else is kind of, it's kind of what I had in mind. I might have to take another stab at this another day. But anyway, yeah, so uh, the reason I say Joe Madden, Corey Lewis, they're different, very different. But they were, somebody was getting them, or maybe it was just them themselves looking for this stuff. But they were getting access to Japanese stuff outside of video games before a lot of us were, or I wouldn't say a lot of us, because I wasn't really part of anything, but I'll say just artists looking at Asian culture and somehow mixing it well, that we weren't even prepared with, prepared to see, so it was all fresh and brand new. You either really loved it, or you hated it. There was no in-betweens, man. What if we did an A, or an A, an I? So I was kind of doing it over here with that diamond shape, and I got rid of it here, I made it more realistic. That diamond shape... It's really cool because it's not a normal eye. What if we go this way with it? I do like the big plump opening looking thing. And it lets us kind of do that kind of thing. Yeah. We could have them looking over here. Maybe just a thicker pupil. Yeah, I think I like this better. And you could probably put like little tentacles coming off of this too. Little just things, you know, gross. Gross is what I'm trying to do, but not so gross that you don't, you know. I don't want to make this a horror book, even though it's Castlevania, vampires, and that kind of stuff. This book is more, I would say, again, Super Sentai mixed with a little bit of horror. I don't, again, I don't want to go f so berserk level stuff. But just a little bit of spice. A little bit of spice. <clears throat> Maybe something like that. I think I like that better. Like I said, I can tell already this is going to take some... some time to settle in on what's the one that I like. Put a little gray on there just so I can see it. Pops a little bit better. Alright. Let's draw somebody. Let's draw somebody. I wonder if we should draw more Alessander. A little spoiler for those that have been uh, around. Will the eye control the whip and sword? No, no, no. It's a. Uh, so I guess we can give like a little bit of stuff. 
because I don't know how much of this will be talked about in the first issue. I kind of just want to throw people right into it. Uh, let the mystery kind of build on its own. Uh, it, truth be told, I'm still working on a lot of the, the world building, in the, and I'll say in the background. But even with Jessup King, a lot of that stuff gets figured out while I'm making the comic. And I don't like... God Eyes was a book we were going to do before this one. Everything's God, remember, with the stuff I'm doing. And uh, what happened there is I got stuck in the backstory of the whys and all that. Um, and they're important things to figure out. But a lot of, I find, which prevents you from moving forward is that, the the paralysis of creation, right? No? So, like, when you're making stuff, you can get paralyzed in that, well, I don't know if this is the right thing to do. And when that happens, God help you. Because <laughs> you can get stuck forever in that loop and you'll never make nothing. Um... So in saying that, there's certain things when I say things like Castlevania, um, Super Sentai, I know there's, that means things, right? When people hear that. As for like, well, who made the Super Sentai version in this world? Like, what does that even look like? This demon, you know, great question. Like you're saying, does he control the whip and the sword and all that? Like I, the things I've come up with, they're like, no, it's independent. It is slowly taking him over. Uh, there's a, the reason I was outlining that is because I'm figuring out some of this stuff, so sharing some of this could change, probably will change, but where I'm currently at with some of it that I'm willing to share. So, if you guys know Castlevania, every thousand years, I believe it is, uh, Castle Dra or Castle Dracula, Cast the Dracula, Dracula and his castle reappear. It's usually through somebody's resurrected them or something like that. That's all pretty much the same in here. I'm playing a little, playing a little bit different with the whys of those things, and Alessander he's usually the guy that always comes back. Dracula, when he comes back, God, or whoever it is, sends Alessander down to combat him, defeat him, and put him away. That's just the loop that's always been happening. So this time, something's different. And this demon that's on his arm, uh, he's uh, this guy right here, right? He's not... Uh, well, maybe he is human. I still haven't made a decision just yet. Uh, I like the idea of him being human, because then we can tell a little bit different stories. Uh, but then the idea of him being like in a loop where he's always doing this could be creative too. If it's a human that's, you know, he's doing it. I don't want to make him an angel or anything like that. I'd rather not put him there. That way I could creatively play with those kinds of ideas later with other, other characters. Um, but anyway, the cycle that's always happening, this is brand new to him. He, there's no reason this is a holy person, right? Even if he is a human, uh, the powers of God, giving him all the stuff he's got, right? He slays... Uh, I don't call him Dracula in mind. I'm calling him Dracula. Um, Rob Zombie, shout out. <laughs> he shouldn't have a demonic anything in him. So I'm trying to taint the cycle here with what's going on, and, and we'll reveal that, and I'll figure it out as we write it on. I'm just giving myself little breadcrumbs that could be interesting to figure out later. Um, really long-winded way of answering your question, but no, this thing is, it's doing something else. And, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. <clears throat> uh, started Hellboy and I find it interesting how simple most of the backgrounds are it's awesome isn't it yes uh, yeah thank you Jeff if you guys do want to follow Corey uh, his channel is called Ray Station R-E-Y-Y-Y -Y -Y Station and please go follow him on Patreon too buy his stuff excuse me show him love okay uh, what are we doing what do I say we're doing we're drawing somebody All right, what are we going to draw? What are we going to draw? Somebody in this world. What else do I need to do? I don't know if I have anything else. i got to um, try to think of characters that I can draw and stream yet. Dragula, I still got to go and design something cool for him. This guy's uh, Super Sentai outfit. Got to design that still. Um, like I said, the Butcher King is in this one too. Uh, in the first issue, changing the way he is. We could, yeah, well, let's just take a stab at the Butcher King. I'll bring up the original reference of the Butcher King for you guys. He's not, some of this has got carried over, but uh, he's definitely like a demon now. In the first one, he was just a human that 
uh, was being manipulated by somebody else to do that, to do the things that he was doing. Uh, where was it? Castle Dracula. Uh, okay, why isn't he here? All right, all right. <laughs> I don't know why he's not here. Where else would he be if he's not here? Um, fan art. Oh yeah, Balefire, forgot about him too. Hmm. Did we put him in the Black Tower? With Brea? No. Not there. Sorry, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to figure out where the hell I would have put this guy. <laughs> Alright, maybe he's not in here. Maybe I just have him in somewhere in here. Concepts, maybe? I don't really put anything in here, do I? Okay, well, I can't find him. For <laughs> oh, man, what a mess. Okay, anyway, he was a guy that had, like, a lot of horns. Uh, a giant cleaver. Got to have the cleaver regardless, right? Especially if you're the butcher. Uh, I'll figure it out. Now, in this one, I mean, it's not it's not a big deal. Spoil him too much. But he is a demon lord. He's a big boy. Big boy. I think. So we got to have a big cleaver on him. I'm not worrying too much on... Trying to just make it, make a, uh, something that tells a little bit of a story with an image here, right? Again, kind of like we did on the right with Alessander. I can just close this. We don't need that open. We can figure out a specific character design after right now. Kind of, I don't know if I want to make them fat. I like the idea, I just like big muscle dudes, right? So let's just keep that going. I don't go like right now. I know he's looking very human, so we're gonna change some of this up here. Obviously, so this could be the big cleaver. So I don't want to. Yeah, see, this is the problem. I, I remember I did this last time too. Because the cleaver's massive, it just takes up so much of his body. All right, I think what we'll do is we'll put the cleaver in the other hand. something so this other one I like the idea of like a hook or something maybe a big old gnarly double hook or something you gotta have chains right you gotta have chains and the, and the horns too right so if he's a demon this is the tricky part too trying to figure out uh if you ever if you've ever tried to make a fantasy book, right, and you want to have elves and dwarves, you just go like the Tolkien or the traditional stuff route, you know, and just put like, okay, well, elves have long pointy ears, dwarves have beards. What do you change in in, uh, in your story to make it a little bit different? I do like the idea of him having like a smile though. He's 
Not a very smart guy, just powerful. A lot of influence. And the other thing too is trying to think of simple, simple ways to draw. Remember what I was saying earlier, if you guys are, I don't know how long you guys have been watching, but uh, <laughs> this kind of style, right, is even what I'm doing right here, like I'm figuring out anatomy and all that. When we get in here to draw it, it's like silhouette is what's the most important part. So when we're going in here, we're trying to figure this stuff out. Um, it's so tempting to go in there and just start adding detail. But that's not what we want to do. Don't want to do that. The butcher king. Actually, let's put a. Sometimes I find this helps too. Let's get a big old fucking disgusting, big old gross brush. Actually, you know, maybe I'll just use the dry brush. I'll put this to monochrome. We'll just make it huge. The butcher king. Oops. And it's just nice to have like a, actually, what the hell am I doing? One second. We're going to make this cool. We're going to, we're going to make this cool. One second. We're going to get some cool font. Uh, uh hardcore arts, you thinking interdim interdimensional or more heaven and hell? A hundred, a hundred percent heaven and hell. I like the idea of making a book about God and the devil and that kind of stuff. Now exactly what they are, that I don't know if I want to just go, you know, Obviously, Alessander and the demons will talk about, like, Dragula isn't the devil, we'll say. He's not the big bad. There's a reason why he's in power and that kind of thing. Uh, I feel like with the villains and the bad guy stuff, you can always play a lot more than you can with uh, God and the good guys. But I, I, I do want to keep it that direction, and as opposed to um, interdimensional. Uh, but I'm also a huge fan of like Lovecraft, you know, where God and stuff, they're spiritual, but they're also cosmic. Something real slick about that. All right, I've just been using Arial, good old uh, meme font. Uh, Arial Black. Center that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, you just get big font like that. It's just cool. Although, I don't know if... Actually, you know what might be might be kind of cool. Let's try this. Butcher. I'm still trying to figure this out. This is this is difficult. This this font placement kind of stuff, but it's it's got like a something sexy about it. And then, because the thing is, I don't want to take away from him, right? Like, he's important here. Uh, so, let's see what we'll do. Let me see if I can rotate him a bit. Just play a little bit more with the perspective he's in. What if we went down like this? All right. Bring it down a bit. Let me just save this. And then the font, I'm just going to duplicate that. And then we're going to rasterize this one just so that we can manipulate it a bit and yeah, what if we kind of I don't know if this will work let's just find out um, is it free transform I think so yeah, so there's too much font all right 
maybe what's better here is if we just do like a do it up here why is it always going to Tahoma come on man I mean, spell that right? Butcher. B U T C H E R. Yeah, it just looks weird. Um, what if the thing on his arm isn't heaven or hell and wants to sow chaos? Okay, okay. You know too much already. I'm trying to be discreet when I share you guys. And if you guys aren't going to play along, you guys are going to know what I'm already talking about. We're gonna have we're gonna have a big problem. We are gonna have a big problem. Butcher. Okay. I'm not trying to follow it. Just, you know what I mean? Like, just have it look a little... To me, if it looks a little indie, almost meaning, and I mean this in a very polite way, like somebody new kind of drawing, so, you know, these aren't lining up kind of thing, that's that's what's getting me excited about this stuff, is it just has a little imperfectness to it. And to me, that that makes it feel unique, even though it might not look that way. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey, uh, okay, you going to dinner? No problem, man. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. Riviera is a reader. All right, it's time for you to go. I think you're the one in here trying to uh, sow chaos. All right, let's get back to this. Okay, we'll go here, and we'll go back up to here. All right, so... Butcher, butcher, butcher. Uh, da, 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 da. That's what I wanted to check. Uh, cleaver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we got to try to fantasy this up a bit, but. Bring this out. Boom. Just. So it would be rusted. Maybe some spikies. I don't know. We'll see. Now for this guy's face though. I'm a big fan of just having like solid black too. Maybe I think we'll go with no nose. There's something about that that's kind of got a look to it. That I don't mind. Let's see if we can bring some Kirby into this a little bit too. By Kirby, I mean see if we can. Oops, let me check. Uh, bring in some just shapes that don't make sense. <laughs> now he's a king, right? So I think it's appropriate for a crown crown of something and I already know this is where we had the concepts before it was like a crown of skulls right so let's do that let's put the the human skull on top here maybe it's got some carvings in it or something that's a shitty skull Something like that. <clears throat> Maybe we 
we can do like a hooves. That might be all right. Oops, this is zoomed in too much over here. Let me zoom out. There we go. Because one thing I don't want, right, is I don't, like I said, I don't want it to feel like this is just a human. Just uh, I understand what you meant about Joe Matt. Everyone growing up in the 80s, 90s was influenced by him. Jim Lee, Bengus, and Akiman. Uh, I'm 34, so I know that time saw Akira and never going to be able to pronounce that before age 10. My man. Put some triangles in. And I'm trying to be very cautious of what we're uh, designing here, right? Because you got to draw this stuff over and over again. But I also want it to have like a feel and a look to it, not just because we can have detail. Let's put it in. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. We could go there. So if his mouth actually, you know what might work, what might work. Let me just try something here. Sound like Alexander's uh, awake out there. All right, if we go like this, we just make all of this black. It's got a way better feel. You could make all this black or something. Makes them feel more evil too. You know what I mean? Like that's not a human being. That's what you want. That's what you want. <clears throat> Maybe what we just do is uh, we just put like scars on him or something like some sort of like design. He's finding he's feeling a little bit tribal right now. I don't know if I like that. And I don't want the big gut on him. It kind of feels like he's got a gut. So let's suck this in and then bring out those pecs. I want this guy to feel not ripped, but he's not he's not tubs. Big old shoulder, bicep, boom, boom, boom. Big old round circle, circle arms. You know, something like that. It's making it feel tribal. Okay, uh, what if we got rid of this? How does that look? Yeah, I think I like that. Uh, you know what? I might get rid of the crown. I think maybe the idea of... Let's just redraw this. The idea of like a human skull might be enough. You know what I mean? Like, the guy's wearing a human being's skull on his head. I feel like that is gross enough. You know what I mean? Like, if you saw a guy walking around with a human skull on his, on his head, he doesn't need a crown. <laughs> Maybe he does. I don't know. All right, so we're going to also put that big hook over here. Do we do a hook? I think the, the hook would be cool. For some story elements. 
Uh, what's up, Ben? Every time I use your brushes, I always feel like I'm copying your style. <laughs> Good. More power to you, my man. <laughs> Maybe we don't do the hooks. The hooks could have had some cool story. Like, I could already see in my head, like, hook versus whip, right? But... All right, we'll keep a hook. Let me just clean it up down here. We're getting... You know what's happening right now? I'm, I'm spending too much time here. Let's just draw. Let's just draw. We'll figure this out. We don't need we don't need to worry about all this right now. All right, we'll lower that down. Boom, make a new layer. Change that to monochrome. And we don't got too much time left anyway. So let's keep this going. Whoops. Micron, where are you, my friend? There you are. All right. Oh. We'll lower that a bit. And I'm just going to put on a tune. You know, I'm going to get right into it. Uh, where are we here? All right. I like it have more spikes like I did in that one. All right, now we get into the fun stuff. All right, like we want this to be zippy. We want it to be quick. You know what might actually be cool? Everybody bitched about this when I did Jessup King. Hey, John, you know you only drew him with three fingers, right? <laughs> Let's give this guy three fingers too. Man, this feels so good already. <laughs> I know I don't want that to sound uh, blowing smoke up my ass, but this just feels right. I'd like to get some black in there ASAP. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna fill in his face. Good shit. Do 
I don't want the teeth to be sharp because they're humans, right? Maybe. Hey, Lewis, how's it going, man? How you doing? Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate the support. I said earlier, too, um, and, and again, thank you. Um, when you're deciding to change kind of your normal, it's, I know it's not the right thing to do, but it's hard not to for me. I still put a lot of weight in what people think, with my art in particular. So the support's great. When I hear people saying the positive stuff, it's like, all right, it takes less, uh, it takes more stress off. <laughs> Um, that leg might be too far back.
Just simple design, right? We don't need to go too crazy here. And er, like I said a little earlier, this is first pass stuff, right? So things and most likely will change. Let's see a little tattoo on him or something. Just draw some gnarly chains here. Okay, let's get some shadows and stuff in here. Start bringing this together. We only got about 15 minutes left, so I want to jam through this here. And the shadows, too. I'm trying to go, not go, I don't want to go full Mignola, right? And a lot of these shadows are kind of like just based off feel. Hmm. Actually, I'm trying to think of like a design thing that might be kind of cool here. I think I like that. Just trying to move the eye around a little bit with this.
Yeah, man. This is good shit. <laughs> Thanks, man. Okay, we're going to add uh, two steps left, and then we're done. Uh, just that contour layer, like I said, I would like to start adding. And then we're going to do quick gray pass. Like super simple stuff, nothing crazy. So if you guys have any uh, last questions or anything like that you want to bring up, by all means, jam them in the chat. Uh, no, I don't stream on weekends. It's usually family time on weekends. And uh, I'm actually going back to work on Monday, so streams, we'll see. <laughs> Streams will most likely be back at night. Um, but streaming is going to be a little bit more harder to come across. Just because of going back to work. So uh, what I will be doing though is getting back into just recording work. And then like narrating over top. So there will still be videos. And again if you guys are on Patreon... All the process for this stuff will be up there. And just kind of what's going on. Boom. 
boom, boom. Yep, my old work, yeah. Got called back, which is really good. Um, so we'll see how that goes. The sad part, though, right, is it's like, oh. <laughs> Just getting into doing some drawing stuff. <laughs> But I can't complain, obviously. I'm excited to get back there, see everybody's doing, get back to some of that. So I'm just looking at my second monitor here just to pull back a little bit and see what's going. Yeah, there you go. I think this is, I don't know, I kind of dig it. What do you guys think? Probably got to see him in action, right? Put an old skull on there. This thing's seen some action, too. I think gonna put some black over here. Just like that. How drastically will your life change that that you Canadians aren't allowed to have guns anymore? Uh I think you always these questions always get asked right at the end when it gets juicy, don't they? <laughs> I think uh, for the most part, I don't. I mean, things will probably be fine, but I really dislike that law that got passed myself. Just the fear mongering of guns. I don't have guns, but I understand why people want them, and I think they should be allowed. Like pretty much every single gun crime that happens is. Uh, the guns are obtained illegally anyway. They're not legal weapons on average. And then, uh, like, I, I've i checked into some of this stuff because, you know, it's nice to say informed. Like, assault weapons and stuff, they sound scary, but it's just a, a, a word. It's not, it doesn't mean, like, you know, things you see in Call of Duty. I think, I think it's based more on fear than, than anything. And I'd prefer not to get into all that stuff because I know it'll start spiraling into uh, some other views I have on other things <laughs> that uh, isn't a popular view, that's for sure. Slap some, uh, oops, I didn't know I'd drawn that layer. Let's get some gray on here real quick and then we're done. Uh, a serious question though, what is your favorite hidden feature? Oh, pfft. I don't know. Somebody linked me something the other, uh, a little while now and I haven't had a chance to check it out of, um, it's almost like smart objects in Photoshop in here. So you could draw like a, a building path or a face and it would be drawn in perspective. I think I like his mouth like that, actually. Just more like a, just a gaping hole of blades and teeth. Actually, let me try something last. One last thing here before we go to the gray. What does that look like? I don't even know what the heck this is now. Look at that. Get some teeth in there. Rawr. Kind of don't mind that. I think I'll stick with this for now. Hmm. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah, we're running out of time. All right, we're going to duplicate all that. And again, if you guys came in a little bit late, what we're doing here, this is for God Slayer. Comic book I'm working on. Uh, a zine, I should say, which is a comic cooler uh but i'm just working on some notes uh that i was w some notes that i was working on uh while i was doing the plotting right so we worked on this you guys can go back and watch this so just trying to think of the flow of his whip maybe the way he moves a little bit here uh just a quick gestural he's all snapped up but think of like uh, i remember this from star wars the way people hold their sabers and stuff can mean different styles, so I thought, what if the, like, how you hold your whip, since it's a cross, would lead to different things, right, like, what if you had two hands on your cross, like, maybe just, like, power slashes, right, or maybe, like, he's got it, where it's split open, and he's just kind of bending it like this, kind of, like, moving it around, I just thought it'd be neat, so I'm gonna just get a little idea there, and then playing around with the, the actual whip itself, and then the parasite that's on his arm, and then we're just going to wrap this up with the Butcher King. Alright, let's get some, some gray in there. What, I, what I've been doing... Actually, let me bring open... Turn these off. I like using like this... Uh, Oh, I guess it's not there. Is it this one? This one. Uh, filling it with this color so it lets me paint in white. But also when you drop the paper texture on there, it makes it feel a little, uh, a little spicy. I'm just knocking a little, just a little cheesy gradient. Nothing, nothing too fancy. I don't like doing a lot of gradients. Let's go, I don't know, pick this guy's skin color, we'll see how that works. Uh, this is the way I've been doing flats now, my friends. Especially when you got a nice contour layer around it. Makes it so much faster. And then we go to the transparent, boom, fill it in, boom, look at that. Ready to go. No dilly-dallying with the uh, flats. Just get in there. Get it done. Nobody likes doing flat selections anyway. In the power of Clip Studio, you don't have to. I honestly think uh, going in there with like a lasso selector, such a waste of time. I know some people like to have precise selections. Honestly, I think it's a, it's a waste of time. Just move on. Most people work at such a high resolution anyway. You don't even need it. Alright, so we go here. So we kind of got this guy. You like the shapes? Alright. That's what I want to hear. All right, let's try this dark color here. I just want to see if we make them more dark. Yeah. Because we're really just worrying with like this. This is kind of a cheap way of doing this without using tones. Uh, also, I'm going to use white here for the eyes to pop. Uh, it's just to get, like, a feeling across. Like, let's say I was doing this guy's the comic with this guy. I, I don't know if I'd necessarily always draw his skin color. It might just be white. Uh, but it's just to move the eye around. So if we're going here, I think we could maybe lighten this up. I don't like going too dark. All right, like maybe we can make his hands. Get the hands like that, maybe. Oh, my stomach's going, man. I'm getting hungry. Maybe we'll do the, the skull. Actually, all this should probably be like that. That way it pops off his body a little bit.
Maybe dark up here instead. How's that look? Yeah, I think light. Maybe make this darker. Almost like he's got a microphone or something, eh? There we go. Now we're getting there. Cool. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. I think that's good. Uh, we'll add some style thing in a second. Yeah, I really don't got too much time here. All right, let's go ahead and make a new layer. And we're going to go with this darker color. I'm just going to do this for the background. Looks like he's like singing. <laughs> okay, and then these guys we're gonna make them not white. Butcher King. And paint over them. Go here, monochrome, brush pen. Oops. What? Why can't I do that? Oh, because it's, hmm. Well, how would, how's gray? Gray work? No. Uh, texture brush. rough it up a bit. So yeah, so we're wrapping this up here, guys. Uh, if you're on Patreon, I'll be posting this on there as well as like the uh, the layered file for Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint, whichever you like. I uh, hope you guys are getting interested in this comic. Uh, we're finally friggin' moving on it. Again, it's a zine. Uh, for those that don't know what that is, I'll be doing a lot, or pretty much the whole thing from home. Uh, I'm going to look at a print shop to get the paper done, just so I can save my toner. But, uh, yeah, just check out a zine if you don't know what that is. I think it's a little bit more cool than just doing a comic book right now. Uh, eventually, what I would like to do, if the zine goes well, is collect them all, and then look at uh, crowdfunding to get it all into, like, a trade paperback. Um, but, yeah, getting super excited. If you want, there's a whole bunch of links at the bottom of the channel there. On the screen too, you can see the the text. <laughs> you can see the text. Wow. But uh, yeah, I, I encourage you guys to, if you haven't, uh, subscribe to my mailing list uh, because once this stuff starts to really get pushed, if you're not a pa Patreon's really the way you're gonna find a lot of this stuff right away. But if you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, that's totally cool. I'm not coming after anybody, right? But. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff and making sure that you're on top of what's going on and or the process too, if you're a process junkie, uh, then I recommend checking it out. But uh, yeah, you can also, uh, it's starting to look a little bit too campy. Um, what the hell am I saying now? I'm all over the place. I'm trying to wrap up because we've got a couple minutes left. Um, but yeah, if you want, you can just uh, subscribe to my mailing list, and I put it out once a month, once every two months, uh, just letting people know what I've been posting and, and all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in what I'm doing, but uh, you know, maybe you don't follow me in certain places, at least this way you can all stay uh, <clears throat> connected, and you won't miss anything. Um, just going to do this one thing here, and then we're done, guys. And thank you, everybody that, uh, that was in here, participated in the chat. Uh, thank you for the questions, the comments, the feedback, all that stuff. Really appreciate it. 
And uh, thank you guys for your time today. Thanks for uh, helping me get through some of this stuff too. I hope uh, this stuff's been interesting. You guys are learning some stuff where it's helping you just get through what you're doing. Okay, so here we go. We're all wrapped up, guys. So good day today. And uh, take care. Uh, the cover looks like a, yeah, just a pinup, no cover. Wait till we get to the covers. That's going to be the good stuff. But anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.